All right, I'm gonna take it from two different directions because I wanna hit, hit, hit the two different personalities and remembrances. So first I'm gonna go with Jason. Jason, Invincible is the boys but bloodier. It is the more real, it is even more realistic than the boys even goes without it being about a ragtag group of humans. But this time it is a kid who found his powers, but he finds out that his dad, who is supposed to be basically Superman in this world, might not actually be as good as he actually is. So think of it almost like how the boys season two ended with the uh, with uh, Homelander's kid. But this time Homelander's kid actually idolized Homelander, grew up to find out he also has powers, but now found out the truth about Homelander Ooh. and is seeing it more and more into everybody. But he's still just finding it in his own way and trying to find his own parts. There we go. Now for JP, you got to look at Invincible is like the story of like, have you seen, you've seen Dragon Ball Z, obviously, right? Ah, uh, yes. Bits this pieces. was a, bits and pieces. This was about the time I was transitioning from being a kid to not being a kid. Okay. Hairs were playing on his chest. Hairs on his chest. Well, think of it like you said how much that you love Justice League, right? Yeah. So, well, it has nothing really to Justice. This is a world <laughs> of superheroes. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's like, you know what I mean? That's Justice League. It has nothing to do with Justice League. But this is a world where superheroes exist, right? We have our different leagues and their different factions, and everybody's trying to play this part. And you have your main guy who is Superman, who is um, uh, Power an Man. Say what? He's an ego maniac. This yeah, he's a whole, but he's so coy. He's got a human wife. He's played by uh, the guy who plays Jonah J. Jonah Jameson in uh, Spider Man. J.K. Simmons. Uh, J.K. Simmons. J.K. Simmons is the voice. So think of the voice of J.K. Simmons on the body of like The Rock. With the psychoness <laughs> of, <laughs> with the narcissism of, um, of, uh, um, you remember in the comics that guy, uh, his name was like Blue Steel. He was like, uh, for DC Comics, he was like Blue Steel, or he was just like a, a, a superhero kind of uh, actor guy who tried to. Guy Gardner? Is it Guy Gardner? No, no, no. He wasn't Green Lantern. He was, um, uh, he, he went back in time to see if he could be a superhero because he couldn't make it in his own time. Do you remember him? Uh, nah, sorry. Like, he like green, like gold, booster gold, booster, booster gold. gold. Ah, okay, do you remember booster yeah. gold? Yeah, I remember booster gold from like the um, the comics leading up to the death of Superman, exactly. So think of the narcissism of Booster Gold, the voice of J.K. Simmons and the power of Superman trying to navigate, moving in this world where he's got a mission. Like he's from Krypton, but there's a mission. And you have all you have a secret agency that is monitoring all these superheroes. And you're looking at it through a teenager who just found his powers, has to keep it secret, trying to live a real life. But actually, there are actual consequences. When buildings fall, people die. When aliens attack, people die. And everybody has a consequence. It's not like, you know, when we see normal superhero movies, the villains come in, the buildings fall, people scream and they run, but we never really see the consequences outside of yeah. physical damage. No. People die every single day. <laughs> so so um, it's on Amazon, right? It's on Amazon Prime, but it's okay. got to um, be moved to Netflix or something at some point in time. So know? season okay. one, season one season? It's only been one season so far. Okay, so, I guess I, I, I'm going to wait for it to come to Netflix. <laughs> having like, you know, so many subscriptions. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. We're gonna, I'm, I'm going to connect you onto my Prime so you can be able to connect in. If that's it. Just so you can watch Invincible. <laughs> So yeah, well, I'm I'm waiting for there to be a um just to be a lag in the superhero. Yeah, so so much coming up that I like I like yeah, to just that's true. Have a, so I many shows, the superhero, so many shows like documentary, so many drama. 
But I don't know if there's going to be a window. I don't know if there's going to be a window open anywhere because it just seems to be. Um, uh, I, th I think the issue will always is because it's it's really interesting what we're do, seeing with the superhero shows. And I think we talked about it before. Maybe I talked it with somebody else. But it, it's we saw this try and come up during the era of like heroes way back in like 05, 04, where you kind of separated out from the comics themselves and tried to create these dark elements. But unfortunately with heroes, if we looked at that now, it's such a slow show. But I think whenever it comes with the, the hero genre, you know, there's, there's you have so much spread with it. You can tell so many stories and be abstract, but also be realistic. That is hard mm. to, that now what's going to happen is you just niching down. Like, it's going to be the one hero show that's happy. It's going to be the hero show that's DC Marvel. It's going to be the hero show that's political. It's going to be the hero show that is apolitical. It's going to be the hero show that is classic heroes. It's going to be the hero show that is futuristic. And I think we're just going to be seeing ourselves in this. So it it's so many shows, but it's not every show that's going to connect after a while. We're sub in them. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. The whole, I mean, I've just heard, like, the Umbrella Academy has wrapped up filming for season three. And like, wow. Yeah. That's, you know, there's a, oh, we, can, we have to do that one when it comes out because I love the Umbrella yeah. Academy. Yeah. Right. Same here. But again, it's it's wow, it's another one, you know. <laughs> it's a but but I will say this: this one at least it comes from a source material. As much as there's stuff around it, it gives enough of an aspect where you're like, I remember this as a teenager, but I also recognize the stupid, like the moral ambiguity that you see as both an adult and as you're a teenager. You talking about Invincible or the Umbrella Invincible, Academy for Invincible? So it does have a it's okay. source. It does have a comic. It does source. have a source material. It's made by the same guy who made Walking Dead. The same guy who made the yeah, comics right. of Walking mm. Dead. Same guy who made Invincible. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. I heard that. Yeah, yeah I mean, okay. it's 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 a real cliche. Almost people saying, "Well, this is going to be a um, this is going to be a show where the where superheroes are in the real world with real consequences and stuff." And sometimes they get it right, like they do with the Watchmen. But th that's sometimes the they don't. But that's the greatest part of it. If you saying it on paper, it's the most cliche show in the world. Again, we've seen it with the boys. We see it with, you know, they tried it with Jupiter Rising. We've seen it, Watchmen. But when Jupiter you watch Rising, the show, yeah. it is nothing but surprises. It is nothing but absolute surprises because it is so uncliche. All right. All right. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm sold. Are you sold, JP? Um. Yeah, because, you know, I've been told to watch it. Let's remind our friends to please click on the subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you know when we have new videos out. Subscribe. Subscribe! Subscribe! Oh, die. Oh, die.